Uh, we have a lot of people that are registered for this, so we might have more people dropping in. But tonight is a night about uh, I don't have I have a lot of slides to share with pictures, but I don't have a lot to say because I'm hoping you guys will have stories to go along with some of the pictures that we share about your experiences, whether you're from Ohio or from this area or not. We know that the um, blizzard of 1978 affected a wide swath of uh, the United States. And I'm hoping that Dick Graber could talk a little bit about what specifically about like what what kind of what, how it affected our area, our snowfall and, and winds and all of that. So I'll let you talk about that when we get to you, Dick. But okay. um, I want you guys to be able to share tonight. So I know that there's a lot of people on this call and I know that on Zooms it can it can be easy for people to talk over each other. So we can use the chat for people to say that you wanna talk if, in case you're having trouble. Um, you know, Casey will be helping monitor the chat so we can see down there if um, if someone says, hey, I have a story to tell, you know, we, we know we can pay attention to that. So uh, I know that we're still in, I always tell people when I do these programs, I'm not a time traveler. All of this is before my time. This is still before my time. I have a couple of years. I was not born yet. So I don't have memories of the, of the storm to share. Uh, myself. Uh, I only know, uh, I was hoping my parents would join, but I've got my grandma and my aunt here, uh, so maybe they'll be able to share. Uh, and uh, I'm from Northeast Ohio, so I know that it affected up there as well. We had the, the lake effect, uh, I think probably was on top of all of that. So uh, so I'm going to switch um, to my, my over my screen here, but before I do, I want to show you my, my source for a lot of the pictures here that I I'm sure a lot of you probably have it in your own homes. Um, you may have a copy. And I know that of things that we ask, we get offered to get donated, people have kept this special section from the newspaper and a lot of people offered to donate it to the Historical Society. So I know people have copies. So my source, my source material for a lot of this Ooh. is the Did we, uh, used to have February 1978 special mm -hmm. section that the Springfield News Sun put out. It was a hundred page special section that had uh, thousands of pictures that, well, they, they pared down thousands of pictures that had been submitted and hundreds of stories to share the local experience of what happened in the storm. So there's lots of local ads, uh, lots of great local photos um, from local photographers taking pictures from around their homes and everything. So uh, a lot of what I'm gonna share in the slideshow is from mm -hmm. this special section. And then I also have, uh, the emergency blizzard edition that went out to um, the, the the news sun one out sent out and and they talk oh about God. in the front of the special section that they uh, that their uh, news Lucas. sun workers were very uh, right here. They, they persevered through the storm to get in to be able to report to people. So they were trying to get this special section in the hands of the people that needed it. So I um, later in later tonight, I'm going to share some clips from um, WBLY when um, Smiling Bob Young over 60 hours uh, on the air and trying to get people help that they needed. They were trying. They were also talking about that how this, the new sun was trying to circulate this as far as they could to help people. So. Uh, well, you'll see images from this. So if any of you guys have those, you know, let me know, hold them up um, if you can find them. <laughs> but I know that that's something that um, was kind of a souvenir of the event that people uh, managed to, to hang on to all after all these years. So uh, I'm going to switch over to share my screen so you can see some of the slides. And I'm going to go ahead and... We're going to go ahead and go to participants. I'm going to mute everybody. You muted yourself. Thank you. And I've got my husband in the other room to yell at me whenever <laughs> something goes wrong. So thanks for telling me I was muted, guys. I didn't realize that was going to mute all. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and share my slides here, get started. And I need to make sure before I do this, because we've got some sound, that I've got the sound shared as well um, when we get to, to some later slides. Um, 
So I'm having trouble. getting my slides up. What's going on? Sorry guys, stop share for one second. Share again. Sorry, I'm having all sorts of technical difficulties that I wasn't having before. Slideshow, I need to get under the slideshow. I might have to get my kids in here just to show me how to do this right now. I don't know what's going on that this part of the screen is not minimizing at the moment. Let me see if I can move it. There we go. There we go. All right. So unmute yourself right away if something goes wrong and I disappear or something so I know uh, what's going on there. So this is a little collage of, of some of the my favorite pictures from that special section. But um, this is being recorded, uh, so hopefully I'll <laughs> can edit out some of our some of our issues at the beginning. Uh, but we we'll, we will have this up for people to, to look at later, and hopefully people can continue to share their stories. And when we get to the anniversary in a couple of weeks, we'll be posting uh, more pictures and stuff for people to share. Uh, so this is uh, that front page of that special section that I told you about the emergency edition that won out uh, over the weekend of the storm. Uh, and this is a, a, an image of our uh, of the Heritage Center downtown, where the where we are now. Though it was the City Hall and Marketplace, uh, it had just be, was no longer the City Hall and Marketplace, um, or they were still doing construction across the street. You can see the the fencing here from when they were building the new City Hall across the street and the and the arcade here. But you can see just how how blustery it was. Um, and when Dick Graber tells us a little bit more about the details of the storm, he can let us know how, how much our wind gusts were, were, were at that time. Uh, and then in the, the special section that they put out in February to look back at the storm, they had a comparison shot to see that just a few, just the next day, how much it had cleared up um, downtown because a lot of what people were seeing was from the wind gusts. Um, and here's our special section. It came out uh, about a month after the storm. Uh, and it, ha it includes all sorts of pictures and uh, clippings from the original um, emergency edition that people could look at as well so they could see how the storm was reported as it was happening. Uh, and we've got um, from th Thursday, so the, st the st storm started on Wednesday, and we've got some, some details um, that are being given um, in that special edition. And then this is a little bit, because um, I have I had some people talk about, well, there was a big storm in 77 too. And I'm, I'm sure Dick can talk about this as well, um, the difference between the the uh, the storms. You can see just here the, the amount of inches that we got um, for uh, a normal year versus um, what we got in, in 78 and what we had had in 77. So while 77 may have had a bad blizzard, 78 was definitely uh, much worse. Uh, so this was um, one that was in that that section there. And I wanted to, well, I didn't mean to start with this. Um, would you guys hear, if you guys wanna, would you guys like to hear the, the Smile and Bob bits now? Or would you rather come back to these? I can come back to these later because I had meant to play these a little bit later. Um, so I'll, I'll go through a few um, picture slides for right now. Um, and this is, this is the part where I'm gonna say, go ahead and un unmute yourself so you guys can can uh, can jump in to identify where, where we are. Um, here we are at the corner of uh, Limestone and Main by the Shawnee building and you can see uh, people trying to help clear the streets. And uh, in the, well, when we, you can see we still have um, decor up from, from Christmas uh, in the background. Uh, does anyone know what the, the fencing that would have been up uh, well, this is the continued fencing. So this was, um, I believe that the city hall opened in May of that year. If anyone is, um, no? Uh, so this is, so there's still construction across the street um, in the former uh, core block. 
uh, and you can see they're, they're, they work for clearing. So if anyone can jump in with details about how long it took them to clear the downtown, I know that on WBLY as um, Smile and Bob was on, he was telling, they were telling people, unless they were in a four wheeler and they were going out to help people, they were not to be out on the streets. The, um, the sheriff and the police department had banned anybody from um, going out on the streets um, by, by the following afternoon. Yeah. We've got some some showing the drifting here. We had drifts that were um, 15 to 25 feet. Uh, this is out on Crable no Road north of Selma Pike, the the Haley House. So you can see there there uh, uh, had been pretty buried here. And this is I think this is a good point, um, Dick. If you want to jump in and give some of the details about um, if you can unmute yourself again. Yeah, if you want to give some of the details about um, how the storm was affecting everyone. Yeah, what it was was that it was a hurricane that developed in the Gulf of Mexico. And it uh, moved northward quickly to the south. It uh, went over Ohio uh, on, the, on Wednesday the 25th uh, on the night, actually. And the temperatures were fairly warm ahead of it. Mm -hmm. And it was like a cold front coming in behind it. Now, the atmospheric pressure was down below 29 inches of atmospheric pressure. Now, this is hurricane type of pressure. And the winds <laughs> around this uh, storm system, on my gauges that were outside, were up to 62 miles an hour. The temperature started out around 35 degrees. There was a little bit of rain with it when it started. Yeah. But then after the front and the low pressure moved through, the temperature had a sharp drop. It went from 35 down to about five below zero by the next morning on the 26th. And the, the rain chased the snow, and it was a heavy snow, as you could tell by the pictures. And it was really hard to measure the depth of it because of the, uh, the depth caused by the winds with the snow. I measure from as little as four inches up to about two and a half feet in my backyard for my measurements. And, uh, and so uh, what I averaged out was about maybe eight inches of snow on the ground in my area. Now, this caused hazardous conditions throughout the area because of the strong gusty winds and the sharp drop in temperature. And uh, froze up in everything, and so it made things really difficult. Um, now, just recently, if you um, I sent out badly a, a copy of, of my past history with the with the weather. At that time, I was uh, giving weather reports over WBLY, and uh, the newspapers started calling me up all the time, and they asked for. Uh, measurements and the precipitation and everything that happened with the storm. And just recently, they honored me by maybe giving me an emeritus associate member of the American Meteorological Society, which is one of their highest uh, type of memberships that they have with the uh, society. So I have all this background. I do not have much uh, information on the 77th storm, but on the 78th storm, I can tell you it was really difficult that next morning to measure it that I went out with a ruler. It was all the way from four inches up to two and a half feet just in my own backyard right there. It went up to 62 miles an hour. Now, the weather service recorded higher gusts, but I could not verify that. Yeah, but that's my information that I have on the store that I uh, can pass along. If there are any questions, I can answer that whenever you have them. I think that's pretty amazing with the gusts because I was reading just in general around about the storm that there wasn't a lot of snow that fell in Ohio. It was the the gusting, um, and uh, that's, true, Dad. Dick, that's what it was. It was. Uh, How do you get our you know, picture? Snow, uh, I recorded on my records as four oh, inches okay. on the ground. Now the uh, storm had dissipated a little bit by the time it left the Gulf of Mexico, like all hurricanes do. But up here, it was still extremely strong because of the low barometric pressure 
and a I'm tight a with Zoom price. thing from um, Dick. Hi, this yeah. is my name is Sherry Chenault. Um, you said it was a hurricane. Were we yeah. going through some type of El Nino to because that is so late be, with the hurricane season not starting till June and it ending in this, uh, November? That that's very uncanny for a hurricane to be in February to cross through to do this. So was there something happening that year? Uh, not really. This is a half a, uh, before. Like a few years ago, there was a type of hurricane type of storm that hit New York City uh, in the middle of uh, winter. And we have these storms that go through the Arctic area every winter that are almost as intense like in the Gulf of Alaska, over to around Greenland. And we have these every year. So it's not just the summertime that we have these hurricanes. We have the hurricane type of storms all year round. It's just that we aren't uh, uh, told about them uh, until the actual uh, summer hurricane season. So it, you're saying hurricane type of storm. So was it technically clarified a hurricane? Uh, the winds were strong enough to be uh, almost hurricane type of storms. They were anywhere from 62 miles an hour that recorded in the city up to or maybe around the hurricane type of winds, were, which is 75 miles an hour uh, out in the open area. And so that's what actually made the wind uh, snow drifts was the wind blowing the snow and uh, piling it up in certain areas a lot careful. higher than what really was. You get our pictures off. So, uh, I, excuse me, I, I'm going to just mute because it doesn't, I can't understand it, what everybody is saying. It doesn't sound right. The sound is, quality is really bad here. Okay. I, I thank you. I'm going to watch it, but I'm going to just turn it down because okay. it sounds like you're in it a might, tunnel It might be something, something with the, yeah, the sound on your end. Uh, so. So the um and yeah, the, thank you. There, a lot of the um the the accumulated snow was because uh there has already been snow on the ground when when the, when the blizzard occurred. So this this is a, a good view of uh, Englewood Street um up off of uh, Limestone and Fountain. Uh, that hey, hey Natalie, I don't yeah. think there was snow on the ground when it first occurred. There wasn't snow on the ground. I think oh, it was fairly warm ahead of it. There was to start out as rain. Then it turned into snow. Frankly, all the snow that we had on the ground mm. came from the storm itself. Okay. I said that, and I might have gotten it confused with another part of the country when I was looking up more stuff about the blizzard. And that was the interesting thing about how, how different parts, um, like like Massachusetts, I mean, they typically get very bad snowstorms. Oh, yeah. They had, I mean, it, the 78, January 78 storm was very bad for them as well. Uh but um, and a lot more snow. But so this was just uh, a lot of snow for our area. Um, but compared to them, it wasn't really um, that as much. But I think a lot of it was how how much people got stranded. And when I go back to the smile and bob clips, you'll hear a little bit about how they helped deal with that. Um, but you can see um, people were very uh, uh, plucky in, in figuring out how to get things done. This was, you know, he borrowed a, a friend's dog to help um, deliver to people. And um, so this is uh, Tom Lick Lookabaugh here. And I love um, the paper always, they don't, they don't do this as much anymore. They always would identify where people were from, um, where they lived in town. Uh, so we had people helping people in the downtown area. Um, some great shots of, of pets. This love this little, little corgi here. And we've got uh, people helping deliver, a dog helping deliver groceries and mm -hmm. Um, so those are some of the great pictures that were submitted for that special section of people. Um, so if you guys have uh, great stories about how, how your help, your pets might have been affected by this, we, you can welcome to, to, to jump in and share about that as well. Um, there's some more pictures from around town. This is down on, uh, on Mitchell uh, across from um, International Harvester and uh, they had shut down for about two to three days um, production uh, be due due to the storm, uh, and uh, as they as they tried to get things clear. And I remember talking. I don't know if Tom made it onto this call, but um, Tom, on our our maintenance guy that works at the Heritage Center, he uh, was working at Navistar at the time, and he talked about how uh, he carpooled with some. Uh, 
uh, two women that he worked with and and the night before they had heard the weather forecast and they said oh are we gonna um, go to work uh, tomorrow and he said oh no problem as long as I can get my car started we'll be fine and he woke up the next morning and realized how uh, you know his neighbor's car was blowing around all over the place and the wind was gusting and he said oh maybe we're not going in and they ended up um, being closed for about uh, three days that they weren't able to, to go to work. And when he, um, he said when he did finally go back, he was up on 68. Um, he said that they would have to go down a little bit on 68 and jog over because there were cars that were still abandoned that had been left uh, in the snow that weren't able to travel anymore that, that took them a while to get, that, get them um, unburied and, and off of 68. So they had to do a lot of jogging over to get there. And then he uh, talked to some coworkers. There had been a, a number of people that had been um, stranded um, in production over a, the course of two to three days. Um, so he said they they were desperate for 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 more coffee and, and food, and they they had raided all the the machines and and drank all the coffee and everything while they were trying to wait to get out of there. Um, but they they were paid for their uh, their overtime when they were stuck there. So he said that was that was a good thing for them. But he couldn't I couldn't imagine getting stuck like that. We've got some more pictures from around town. Um, school kids were affected, and they probably loved their snow days. Um, but they did get a few extra days, um, depending uh -huh. on where they were in the county. They missed, I think, it said in the paper, three to five days. So I don't know if there's anyone on here that was was school age that wants to share about their school experience. Um, but we've got some Reed school buses you can see have been kind of buried by the drifts here and some students at Snow Hill uh, standing we, out outside the school. We, we did have one comment in the chat. Um, uh, Keisty, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, was six and in kindergarten in Northern Ohio um, and was out for full, two full weeks. Oh, wow. So yeah, Springfield, um, according to the paper, it was only about five days max. I don't know if other people had more, but there was a, um, talked about how there was a senator um, that had introduced um, possibly adding at least five more days to the um, to, to people so that they wouldn't have to go to summer school for the school that they'd missed. But I wonder if the, North, the Northern Ohio people might have had to go to summer school that year. Um, uh, in, the, in the chat, there's a, there's a documentary of, um, about uh, the blizzard, about life from, from Northwest Ohio. So you can see, you know, it's going all across Ohio. Um, we've got another school picture coming up. This is um, at Simon Kent, and you can see the drifts outside their classroom window. Um, this is uh, a student there. Um, and and the, the good thing, we, we have the special section from, from the newspaper, but since we now have the um, Springfield News Sun's entire collection that they donated to the Historical Society, we have all the original pictures as well. So we have a whole bunch of pictures that were taken from the storm that were not used um, that we have in the collection as well. So that's a really, a really great collection on the storm uh, that we have with, with neat pictures like this. Hey, um, hey Dick. No, it's not Dick. Dick Graber? Now, now. Yes, I'm here. Um, I was at Lagunda Lane's bowling the night of the blizzard. When I came out of the bowling alley, it was warm. I was in shirt sleeves and it was raining. Right. And by the time I got to Northampton, weather had really begun to change. So it was very fast. Yes, I was uh, saying that uh, earlier, that it started out as rain. See, I was working at the post office at the time. And I uh, remember, because when I, uh, my ship was ending, right when the storm was starting, and it was starting out as rain, and I got home, and I had the next two or three days off. And I was very happy, because after I got back home, it really started intensifying and changing over to snow. And the post office at the time actually gave the uh, letter carriers the day off so that they didn't have to snow. That was rare for the post office. They don't hardly ever give them any uh, days off, no matter what the weather conditions. But for the storm, they gave them uh, one day off towards the weekend uh, and then to come back after uh, they had cleared the streets off a little bit to get back to work. But it was uh, 
you're verified what I had said earlier that did start out as rain changed over to snow real quick after that low pressure uh, hurricane type storm moved through and the temperature started dropping sharply uh, from the middle 30s down into below zero by the next morning with the gusty winds. And the wind chills were down, uh, you could probably quite imagine, down into the mid 50s or 60s. I say this this picture here on High Street shows uh, what probably a lot of people were doing <laughs> afterwards a lot a lot of shoveling and clearing, uh, and I've got I've got a picture here of, of the of the house today on on High. So this was another one where we had the original in the in the um, in the collection, um, and this is um, showing a newspaper boy with his it, the uh, picture identifies it as dad is his dad, but I'm not sure um, Oliver um, Sam Oliver. Um, so he was, they, so they continued their, their deliveries. But like I said, the, the new son was determined to get their special, um, emergency edition out to people to let them know, um, things that they needed to know. Um, and I see, we've got some questions about, um, the, the snow of 1950 here and other people that, that remember that. And I remember talking to Bob and Flossie today in Virginia about how they, their memories were very clear of that as well. Um, and I remember that in the special section, it talks about how that helped prepare people um, for a storm like that and, and to be, understand more about disaster preparedness. So, um, Dick, can you talk anything about the how those two storms compare? I know that 78 is considered worse, but um, can you talk a little bit about the details why? Well, deadly, actually, I went through both, both storms. And it was hard to tell the difference between the two, which one was worse than the other. Because the storm of 1950 hit around Thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, that was uh, towards the uh, weekend. Because I remember the Ohio State was uh, to play a football game that Saturday. That was, that was the snowball. <laughs> yeah, the snowball over there. They just decided uh, and they couldn't play in it. I don't think so. Uh, but the, cause compared to the 78, it was pretty much the same, actually, because I think there was probably more, might have been more snow in the 1950 blizzard than there was in the 1978. But the difference was with the winds, I think there was more wind and cold temperatures with the 78 blizzard than there was in the 1950. Of course, I wasn't recording weather data back in 1950. I was still only about six years old at the time. But I do remember that uh, the snow was over my head as I was walking around. Uh, the area over there. So uh, there was a lot, might have been a lot more snow in 1950 than there was in 1978. It was a different type of storm altogether. So that's my comment. Well, I, I say here, we, we got some pictures of, of, of Smiling Bob, and I think that his name is Dan Klein here. They're, they've got that, that emergency edition. Um, and I think this is part of when they were on the air for, for 60 hours straight trying to trying to give people um, information about how to get groceries, how to donate for groceries, how to get help for people that were uh, stranded, um, how to, you know, there was, they were trying to coordinate to, to get people out of this. So um, we'll, I'll play some clips from that in a little bit. We've got some more pictures from out in the county. We've got uh, South Vienna here. Um, you can see that, and I, uh, the other thing, I'm um, talking to Tom today about his memories of it. He said that uh, on 68, there was some such high drifts, but then when you look beyond it, there was like no snow. So like I said, with the picture that they had of downtown, um, it was at the height of the storm, just 24 hours later, there's hardly anything down downtown. So there was just certain areas where, like you said, Dick, even in your own yard, there was the snow drifted much more than others. So um, that would have affected um people that getting stranded as well and we know that power was knocked out for a lot of people and um we say that these people were in more ingenious with their um hot ways of getting around um this is uh uh paul grubbs and and his wife and um their friend uh was he hooked up to his tractor to get around and they helped uh, make deliveries to people and um on the radio you could hear smiling bob kept reiterating no you should not be out but if you've got four wheelers, you know, here's where you need to go to come help us out. So they were, uh, people were, were, were definitely helping people. So that was, that was a good thing to see. Um, as always, you know, people, people out there. Hi, Natalie. Uh, yeah, Patty. Patty. I, 
I was working at the Kissel Company then, and my dad was at First National Bank, and neither of them were closed the, the Thursday morning. We drove into town from west almost from almost to Donaldsville. Terrible drive. And when I got to Kissel, there may have been a handful of people showed up, but I had jury duty that they didn't cancel. So I walked from Kissel up uh, Limestone Street to the courthouse, sat there for maybe a half hour or more, trying to find if they had enough people to hold a case. They were going to send us over to juvenile court. They couldn't get anything there. I walked back to Kissel. By that time, they closed Kissel. They closed First National Bank, and we drove home. It oh, was my goodness. First drive ever. Oh, my gosh. I can only imagine. Um, Natalie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, Terry, yeah. Yeah, this is Terry. Um, it, we were we were in a farmhouse outside of Enon, and we were snowed in for three days, but my sister-in-law was outside of Northampton, and then the snow, and they were in a farmhouse, I believe it was on Penny Pike or something, but they were snowed in and lost power. And and the funny part was my father-in-law was very concerned. He was in Enon and, and couldn't call them because it was long distance. So he called me <laughs> and we called them. Well, every time we called them, they had to come up out of the basement and that was the warmest spot in the house. So. Oh, goodness. <laughs> But yeah, the, but, that's some of the, the uh, I'm at the end of this, we're going to, I'm going to share the full recording for um, the WBLY with Smile and Bob. So you got, there's, it's about, um, it's over an hour between the two recordings. And it's really interesting to listen to how everybody was affected. Um, somebody says that they were, um, Katrina says they remember the National Guard having to come get us from Dennis Street um, yeah. in Washington Courthouse. Is that what that is? Um, now, guard, on your on your birthday. <laughs> yeah, the guard went in and picked them up finally after about three days and took oh. them to Northwestern High School. So goodness. They and um, I think they went to school for a couple of days. We see some other people here trying to trying to get a car out of the snow. That's definitely not the kind of car that you want to be trying to drive in this. That's why they were telling all only four wheelers come out and, and help. Um, we've got they had some great um the special section had some great beauty photos. Um, this is from one of the actual um, New Sun photographers, but uh, they talked about that, you know, they were taking pictures from, from amateur photographers all, all over the, uh, the county um, and, and photographers um, from, from their own um, New Sun staff had contributed some of their beauty photos that they, that they had. Um, so these are some great, you know, the trees are always beautiful. Um, and at the end, I've got some pictures of, you can see this, the snow piled up on, on th various things around. Um, see some poor cars buried here. Uh, and, and in the grocery stores, I can see, you can see here, please limit your bread to two loaves. But you can see they have cleared out the bread. It's, it, looks, it looks eerily similar to things we're seeing now at the grocery stores. Uh, as for, or still whenever there's a storm coming or whenever, you know, that we, 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 we deal with that as well. Um, but I know that uh, Fulmer's was, was taking donations um, through, through the radio or, or, or directly um, that you could send money to Salvation Army and then they were helping deliver to people um, in town that needed, needed help getting food to them. Um, you can see more. I'm not sure where in, where in the county this is, but you can see a lot of um, the snow here and, and some <laughs> drifts outside people's houses uh, here. And this, uh, this to me looks like it's limestone, but it wasn't identified. Um, but that, is that, do you guys think that looks like limestone too? Um, I, I bet you we could probably line that house back. Up. I know it. I know it's uh, um, North Limestone because it says Cook. Uh, um, it's still that tax, tax consultants. And, okay, uh, it's still that one that's that's there actually uh, in that same house. Um, it's not called that anymore, but yeah. Right. Um, but it's it's just up the hill on North Limestone there. Yeah. So this is was to be McCrite that you can't see back there, but yeah, I think that's uh, so that's a that's a neat one that must be during the the uh, the height of the storm. And then we've got an aerial one of downtown. Um, I think this is what, that's the Huntington, right? Yeah, and we've got um, the Tallet Casket. Um, I don't think any of these other buildings are here anymore. We've got the Columbia one still there. But, uh, so this is, um, what's this, Columbia here. 
and for sure we've got first national oh yeah the bank parking over here for first national bank um and then this one is let's see is that robinson can there i can't tell this building is that memorial hall yes okay so we're 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 main street here right in lowry i guess because i think that is robinson can yeah and there's monty's in and we've got um Roger Tackett was the only one I could identify for sure here. I don't know the other people here, but we're looking at some drifts here. Uh, and then this, I think um, some people that were sheltered, I'm not sure where this was, but I know that um, the the Best Western and another one of the hotels out on Leffel Lane, they, had, they were putting people up um, that were stranded. Uh, I'm not sure, I can't remember what the identification was on these particular pictures here, or uh, where this was, but. Looks like a church. Are those pews? Maybe, oh, wait, wait. Yeah, yep. the pictures, the pictures sideways. <laughs> it's, it's sideways. Thank, yeah. Thank you for whoever caught that. Yeah, we turned this one sideways. So this is some people sheltering in the church. Okay. Right. So I maybe say, I've never seen bunks like that at a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, good, good call on that one. Natalie, yeah. this is Tom Joanne's. I think that's my dad's church, First United Church of Christ on the corner of East High and Belmont. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. that's what it is, oh, I think. Okay, so that is... I think there's a, the pews at the, my dad's Yeah. Okay. Church. Well, thank you. I will go back and I will get an ID on this photo and I will turn it uh, right to the right side here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and then we've got we've got some pictures at the radio station uh, when they were taking in the collections from from people. They they uh, people sent in money for forty one thousand more than forty one thousand dollars worth of groceries to help people out during the storm and afterwards. And then this is um, some people that were um, helping uh, with deliveries to people uh, getting that get them to people so you can see this is uh he's got some stuff from this is fulmer's um uh brand stuff that and bread and, and everything there they were helping get out to people and we've got <laughs> i love this picture of uh, like all the the snow on either side of them um not sure exact location of this but somewhere out in the county and then uh <laughs> they they were it was self-service only uh, at this point, but if, if people wanted to get out there, and that was another thing I remember, uh, if you listen to the recording um, from WBOI, he's saying um, which gas stations are open for people that were out there helping people where they could still go get um, get gas. Uh, we've got uh, some, some more drifts. Um, not exactly sure where, where this is, but looks like it might be mall. more by the mall area. Mall. And yeah. Another good way to get around if you had a if you had a snowmobile, and we got some more more uh, cleared out shelves, and then let's see if we can figure out where this is at. That is uh, I seventy looking up South Yellow Spring Street, uh, okay. right where the uh, right by where the uh, Dolly's Bright Spot, or which is now Chaps Bar. Okay. Oh, I see bright spot there. All right. And then we've got uh, trash collection was a bit delayed, <laughs> but but the, this notes that the the cold kept it from from smelling too bad, so that that was at least a silver lining there. And then we've got some more just shots from around town. Uh, made dunking pretty easy. Uh, yeah, just stick your broom or your or your. Uh, your shovel out right out in the snow, stand up. And this is out of the Best Western on Leffel. Um, their sign was blown over. And uh, this is some of the people that were that were uh, stranded there, uh, playing out by the pool. 
and then some of the ads that they had and a lot of the in the special section the the business local businesses definitely took advantage of you know getting in there and showing you know how they had helped or or now that we're past the storm you know things that you could think about in the spring or all, all there was all sorts of um really great advertising in there um my all throughout. bicycle center and huh. lots of that's just the thing from the you can pack there. great things you know the and then did, did anyone get things. um one of these self-preservation certificates no uh yeah. i've seen these around this is something that from um gil whitney from whio uh, i've seen some people say that that they had these um none of them have made it our way yet um to the historical society but i think this is a, a neat a neat piece of of the history um, so if you made it through, congratulations, <laughs> this is your certificate. Um, but I'd like to go back um, to the, uh, to the clips that I have from um, Smiling Bob, his um, grandson um, gave these uh, recordings to us and they're uploaded on SoundCloud. So if, uh, I think Casey has those those links to both of those if she's still on here if she can um drop those in the chat for people and i'll um when we put the uh the recordings up from this i'll make sure that those um, links are available for people as well uh right so you can listen to the whole thing because it's it's really it's really a, a, a kind of a trip to listen to um uh, i have listened to it before. I listened to a good chunk of it again today, but um, I'm going to start with the, the first clip here. Uh, this would be, I think, on, on Thursday. I, you know, too, not to go out on the street, but it's official now. Don't go out on the street and don't drive your car, anybody. Now, I know that's going to close up a lot of businesses. But the chief of police does not want you on the street. And he does not want you driving your car. He doesn't want you walking. And the same thing goes for the county. Okay, so that's going to close a lot of places. That's for sure. But that's the only way. It's the only way. Today is just as bad, if not worse. The only thing is today we don't have the high winds, but it's, it's, today is just as bad as it was yesterday, and you're in the, still in the state of an emergency, and we still need food. That's the big thing today is food. People are being rescued this morning, and I'll tell you the gospel truth, most of those people were dug out last night. There were some that we couldn't get to last night, but most of them were dug out of there last night. Boy, I, that was a superhuman effort on the part of those people out there, those four-wheelers four and the sea beers and the alert team and the coring company and the sand and gravel company. But most of those people got out of there last night. But the, the problem this morning is food, and it really is the major problem. And the Salvation Army is going to deliver that food, and we're going to go to Fulmers and get it. So if you call the radio station and... You'll pledge so much food, or we can buy X number of dollar of food from Fulmers, and you send a check, and make the check out to Fulmers. We'll we'll pay the bill, or we'll we'll guarantee them that they'll be paid until the money comes in, Fulmers. And then we can send a big truck after it and ship it all at one time over there. And the chief don't want you on the street, so you won't be able to take it over there. Now we need four. We need four four wheelers here at the radio station. And we'll only need you here for about five minutes because we got some place for you to go. If you can come into the front office, we need four four-wheelers, but we only we only need you here for five minutes. We've got some place for you to go, and for some reason or another, they don't want you to say where you're going. So if you get four four-wheelers here, we'll find out where you're. We don't know ourselves where you're going. We know who wants you, but we don't know what for. Okay. And they need you pretty fast. Four four-wheelers. Okay, find out what's going on and read about it from the Springfield Daily News, John Black and Company. All you to grocery stores, supermarkets, uh, filling stations, hardware, or any place that's open, emergencies, the newspapers, they will bring to your place of business, and then you can give them away to the people. They're all free. 
we've got $150. We can't lose these things, you know. we got to keep track of these things. $150 from Minick Realty and Associates. $75 from Claria Chatfield for groceries. $25 from Robert A. Wells for groceries. My God, you people are really coming through. $50 from Mrs. Robert Shanahan. $250 from Marion Crummy from the Bonnet Oil Company. Oh, Barney. I talked to three, Barney on the phone three or four times last night. Oh, they're open? All good. So the bonded oil stations are open for all you guys who are out in your four-wheelers. Everybody else is supposed to stay off the street. There's one at High and Yellow Springs. There's one at 1840 South Lime. And there's one at Limestone and McCrite. Nancy Gorsuch, $50. I mean, I took off some of these things here, and they're not legible to you. St. John's Church, $30. That's from the Feelings Lady, $30. James Dow, they're going to mail it in. $20 from C.B. Williams. So we better keep track so we know just exactly how much groceries to buy. And that's why I'd like for you to get somebody to take over here so we can go in there. So uh, this is really neat to listen to because, he, you know, he'll throughout he'll, 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 um, the other, other part he'll, that I'm going to get to, he, um, they're giving out all sorts of numbers to people. And this is where, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to have somebody explain to me how this works. Um, people were calling in and offering their phone numbers to be used for people to get through. And I don't understand how that worked. Mm -hmm. um, could somebody explain how they could give over? Because uh, there was one interesting call that if you listen to the whole thing, um, somebody from Jack Bowser um, car dealership called in and offered all of their entire phone bank. Um, to be able to be used um, and said, you know, they could go turn it on. But I, I don't understand how uh, how that how that was working um, for, for numbers to be used for people. Can anyone out there explain that? Well, and I don't understand why these people needed food. I mean, you know, I mean, it was just one day. Why do you need, I don't know. Well, it sounded like there were people that were, were stuck for multiple days. And there is, and, and, and on this next part, I'm not going to play this. I'm gonna, not going to play that call, the full call. But there's a call on there where he's on the phone with some people for a little while that are stuck out in town. And they'd been stuck for a couple of days and they had already called in once and no one was able to get out to them. And they had people that had medical emergencies that they were worried about. Um, and people whose whose power was out, and they were without heat, or they were without electricity. So there were there were some um, some real worries, and and people that were stuck at home with you know seven kids and um, needing to get out to get supplies. So I think um, that was that was a lot of it. Um, but it was just it was interesting. Um, it's interesting to 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 hear um, a lot of the call ins and and people calling in offering you know to help however they can. There's some people that called. Um, and said, you know, I can, I can offer my car, but they didn't have a four wheeler. So he says, no, you, you just stay home. So, um, I've got another clip here that I want to play a little bit of. He's been there last week. <laughs> B-O-Y. Yes, did you take an order for groceries? No, ma'am. You ready for a number? Uh, yes, I am. Now, I've next got time. about three families here. We're all stranded out here. It can all come to my house. Okay, you ready to write this down? Yes, I have a pen. 323. 323. 7912. 7912. 325. 325. 9093. 9093. 323. 323. 5569. 5569. All three will probably be busy, but keep trying. Okay, thank you. Mm. All CB radio operators, they would like for you to stay off of Channel 1. All CB operators, stay off of Channel 1. They need it for emergency use only. We better we better get make a little bit of money around here, don't you think? Yeah. So? Take a little break. Just be, be right patient back. with us while we kind of run these spots back to back, but we'll be right back. Yeah, we've been asked by the girls here at the radio station. And they are neat also. They need instant coffees and tea bags. <laughs> Clarence Smith, he's the one who brought the other. Yeah. We don't have any coffee here or tea bags. If anybody's coming past WBOY, when you guys driving a four wheeler there. I guess the gals can't go without coffee, can they? Yo, why? Uh, this is Raiders out in Lawrenceville. 
Country Club closed? Uh, yeah. If the water's off, or, you know, there's no water over there either. We couldn't even open that up. So. Oh, sorry. We stayed on that one too long. It, well, that I said that one was interesting because then yeah, she, she, she says, are you going to come out and, and get some soup? I'll make you some chili. So there's a lot, there's a lot of funny banter there. And then there's a, there's a, a poor woman who's very, the one I mentioned late, who's, who's very upset. Um, let me jump to about, let's see, about six minutes. We've got, we've got someone that's trying to get a marriage license. And I think Bob's going to try and figure out how to, how to help them. That's when they got married. Yeah. Yes, I'm calling for uh, Linda here. Uh, she was supposed to get married tomorrow too. And I was wondering if there's any she might get her license too. She's in Florida. And they're supposed to have a, a big wedding at St. Brown's Church. She has to get her uh, marriage license also, huh? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> but she's, you know, anyway, she's got a four-wheel drive that'll bring her in. Well, what we need is a probate judge. We can't, there's somebody to work in the probate office and they're closed. Mm -hmm. And they cannot get there. Oh. Want me to give you a special dispensation? Yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> Yeah, I understand her problem. She wants to get. She really wants to do it, huh? I guess so. She's coming from Florida home to get married. Okay, what is her name, man? Linda Harris. Linda Harris. Harris. H a r r i s. Yes. Married. Wants yes. to get married. No license. So this one, I, I listening to this, I want to know if Linda Harris was able to get her marriage license. He goes on to say, you know, he'll try and um, get a hold of the probate, one of the probate judges to get a hold of her to see if they can help her out. So I, I if, if anyone, I wonder if there's anyone out there that knows, but yeah, I'm curious if they, if they managed to get married uh, when they were, when they planned to. And we've got another one here where he goes on to a little more detail about um, how you can help with groceries donating the money, the money to call for donations for food and we we need food bad everybody needs food not only the rich but the poor and the middle class everybody's needs it not because of welfare or food stamps or anything everybody's in the same boat this time yeah I care if you got a million or you got a dollar 98 they're in the same boat we have made arrangements with foamers and you can call the foamer stores 323-5880 and tell them how much you will buy or 325-2440 we will guarantee your check no 325-2444 are you sure yeah you said 40 i did i got this is what i got written down here no, it's 44 four. three two five three fours okay i swear that's not the number i got this morning yeah 325-2444, that's Fulmer's, or you can call WBLY and donate what you can. And we have made arrangements to, uh, to uh, for credit, and the food will be shipped to the Salvation Army in big trucks, then delivered to the people in four-wheelers, and then we will pay, we will guarantee your payment there, and you send, make the check out to Fulmer and mail to WBLY. BLY. Uh, you've probably been told more than once that on Channel 3, they are calling about these two-wheelers being out that uh, are messing up these four-wheelers of uh, getting out around to everything. So uh, I just wanted to I'll let you know again on Channel 3 on CB, they are uh, all about these people driving around downtown now on these roads and messing up these four-wheelers and getting through. Mm -hmm. so, so Bob wanted to remind people to stay home. <laughs> you should not be out and about. Uh, so uh, if, if there's anyone out there that wants to share um, if you were stranded or how... how um, when you were eventually able to get out, Patty, you said you had a terrible drive home. Were you guys stuck there for a while after that? 
I remember through the weekend, by the time we got home, the garage was all snowed over. So we had to dig out to get the car in the garage. And then we didn't go any place for probably the, until the first of the next week. So yeah, it was uh, the, uh, the the thing the with with pe people getting groceries to people. I mean, it sounded like it was a, a widespread issue of people, and then I mean, there were people that were stuck in their homes, maybe with you know with kids that couldn't get out, and they weren't supposed to go out in their cars, but maybe they didn't they didn't have um, couldn't be stocked up on food. So if you're going to be, and it sounded like you know that one call, they had several families that were stranded together. Um, so they, they needed to, to feed all feed all their people. We lived up the just down the street from Cato's Market on West National, so they were open and helped the neighborhood community um, yeah. to get yep. food. So it's yeah, it's really interesting to see how how people came together to 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 help and. Um, but I'm I'm curious, like a, a week out, are we are things pretty much back to normal? Does anyone? anyone say um if how that was moving the mouse could i talk yeah flossy <laughs> i hear you oh, we, we didn't have a garage at that time we parked on the blacktop they had behind our house which was for the travel trailer and they didn't plow the alleys so we had to shovel out what 120 feet of the alley which was packed I couldn't do it. Our son was a senior in high school and he and Bob had to go down with the shovel and then in with the shovel about three times to get to the bottom in order to get our car out. So that was not fun. But And it was our daughter's birthday. We had a cake we were to take to her in Cincinnati because she was a, a freshman in college. And we put it the cake in our neighbor's freezer because we didn't have a place big enough to freeze it. So he, her birthday was a week, cake was a bit, a week late, but we finally did get, Bob and Bill finally did get shoveled out of that alley. It was horrible. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't shovel it enough. I was I, capable, I, but I couldn't do it. Just thinking about the city streets um, in the neighborhoods, I imagine that um, if the drifts were high or if your your car was was snowed in like that, it would have taken a while to, to get out and that's packed down. Problem. Yeah, yeah. So that's well, what a lot of people were facing just to be able to get out, and you weren't supposed to be on the road. And um, well, even when they could, the road was well, clear, we still couldn't get out without shoveling that alley out. Yeah. <laughs> well, for the for about the first week. Didn't really any good to get out of the street because you couldn't go any place anyway. That's right. <laughs> so, um, I have a, looking at the the comments we've got. Um, Barbara, she she was living in Iowa at the time, and she said that was like a normal winter to them. So it was that uh, wouldn't wouldn't have been anything uh, much to her. Um, we have people saying they remember uh, thunder snow during the storm. And that Ohio State did play. That was the infamous snowball game. So yeah. um, Bob's going to uh, talk about that picture. That picture you have up, the <laughs> the one at uh, Limestone and Main. Mm -hmm. That one. That's when they were building the the center, of the building where the Chamber of Commerce is now. Right. Yeah, that was M and M Bank. Used um, to be right. Right, and they yeah the Chamber Building. And the today. fence, the fence over there. I would assume that they were still uh, working, uh, tearing buildings down in the core block. Yeah, because this was, well, so 78, I'm not, I know that um, the Credit Life building opened in 80, but they, I think they were starting construction in at least, at least 78. I, I think I've got that um, exact information somewhere. So yeah, the whole core block would have been fenced think, off like that for, for a while. I think, I think they tore it down, I don't know, about 1970, somewhere along there. Well, they, they, they started tearing down in 76. Um, 76? 76, well, 77, I believe, 76, because the issue um, that- Seven and six, take that's it down right. Was seven and six and 76, so, um, but. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I've mentioned it before when I shared the pictures that we do have online that aside from what we have from, from the newspapers collection, we don't have a lot of pictures. So that's something that we're, if people are out there and they're ready and they've got pictures from um, the storm of 50 or 78 and they 
are wanting to part with them at this time, we, uh, we'd we be happy to have them. Patty, you've donated so many things from your family. Do you have storm photos? <laughs> I'm sure I'm, you do. I'm pretty sure there's some in the box, so I'll look for them. Yeah, so next time, next time the storm, come, the next time they come around on anniversaries, we'll have more ones, more to share, hopefully. So um, we're always happy to, to share more from, from people's experiences. Uh, but I know that this is one that, you know, uh, with big big weather calamities like this and and, and things that um, people always have stories to share and we're happy to we're happy to hear them. Natalie, yeah. uh, this is Dick again. Uh, there have been uh, three things that have happened in the winter time. One, we're coming up on another anniversary, January twenty first, the nineteen fifty nine. There was a big flood here, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a lot of story about that. There was. A lot of snow on the ground, about two feet of snow on the ground. Then there, the temperatures warmed up rapidly from the 30s to the 50s, and a, a four and a half inches of snow of rain fell on top of that and caused the flood. And that was going to be the anniversary of that about a week. Mm -hmm. Now, with the American Meteorological Society, when I first got on them with my Everettas, they had a big thing doing about the winter. Uh, about the cold Christmas of 1983. Now we had temperature, it was the record low temperatures back in those days. Uh, we had temperatures down around 13 below zero with strong gusty winds again of around 35 miles an hour, which caused wind chills down there. But it was a clear day, a cold clear day that day. So there was a lot of uh, hazardous weather that occurs in the winter time. I think Keep the taper off as we can go later in the year, though. Well, no, yeah, another anniversary we have coming up is in 1929. There was two floods in in the area, um, one that at the end of January into February that was again caused, I think, by the same thing, Dick, with uh, a lot of snow and then melting and um, and flooding. And then there was one later that year in June of 29 um, that that affected. So. Oh, well, that's, that's a possibility. I wasn't around then. I was born in Yeah, that's that's before all of our that's before all of our memories here. Now, um, I say you were getting you were getting closer there. That's funny that eighty three was such a cold year because eighty two, I was born in December of that year, and that was one of the hottest Decembers that there had been in a while. So, um, well, actually, the next year, nineteen eighty four, we had the warmest Christmas. Uh, uh, well, the warmest Christmas on record with temperatures. <laughs> Oh, it's so. interesting how weather goes back and forth like that. Just, yeah, it it always does that. So we're, we're right now we're into mid January and we've had kind of a, a mild one. Do you, do you have yeah. any, is there anything coming up, Dick, that we should we should prepare for for the end of the month? Well, the weather service is saying that the uh, <laughs> is going to cause a mild winter. So it doesn't look like anything real cool. Now, if we, we usually get below zero temperatures in January, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen this year. And so far, we've been just uh, only in the upper tees for the low temperatures uh, for this winter. So we're going for a, a very wild winter so far. Yeah. It's it looks been, like it'll continue that way. It's been very mild. I was commenting on our Facebook page uh, a couple of days ago that usually at this time of year, I've posted several closing notices due to weather. Um, yeah. And we haven't had yeah. weather like that yet this year. So, um, but we haven't been open yet either, but we will be open next week. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I was happy public. to hear from Anna on that. So, today. Yeah. So we hope, we hope that people will, will be able to come visit the museum and um, I'm, I'll be taking appointments in the library and archives um, starting again next week. So the cold, the coldest weekends will be around the 21st of January. Yeah. That's his birthday and it always is. And <laughs> We used to go away for with a card club that we were in, and around that weekend, and one year we saw the Ohio River was frozen solid <laughs> under the Brent 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 Spence Bridge was solid ice, and it was twenty two below zero. So <laughs> look for the twenty first of January to be cold. <laughs> Well, actually, Bob, I recorded the coldest temperature somewhere around the 10th of January. First week of January. So it varies so the first to the last week, back and forth. <laughs> May I I am, got uh, a raised hand. I, I, I wanted to say something. Uh, I just want to appreciate Dick Graber bringing up the storm of 1950 
because I lived in the southeast uh, Kenwood neighborhood during both storms, the 1950 and the 19th, uh, one we watched tonight in the 78. And uh, the 1950 was really much worse uh, in our neighborhood than the 78 one was. In fact, I, I remember um, I lived at the corner of Fulton and Nagley and Nagley from the, our house at Fulton went downhill to Sunset Avenue. And at that time, it drifted so badly that it was like a straight plateau clear down to sunset. And then it just dropped off into a cliff like onto sunset. It was, that was a stone, uh, the drift in 1950. It was really bad. And uh, the neighborhood men went out and dug tunnels from one house to the other down Fulton Avenue. And then they worked a tunnel down to sunset because sunset was a major, it actually was the end of the city at that time was city limits. And uh, it was a major thoroughfare, you know, so they did a clearing on it uh, as one of the first places. But the 1950 was really the worst one for us in that end of town. I think I think next year in November, well, or this year, I guess, in November, maybe if we're, we're still, uh, well, we'll probably keep doing virtual programs anyway, even if things are back in person. We'll do, we'll do one about the 1950 storm as well for people. Um, I hope you can get enough photographs because... You know, in those days, we didn't have cameras like we do nowadays. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people didn't have cameras. And I, I think maybe maybe that's kind of the diff a little bit of the difference between the storm, the the ease of reporting, and right. and and you see a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, citizen reporting more in this one, especially you know that special section was all people submitting. So right. um, there was a so there was a, really a shop down on Limestone right next to the State Theater, just north of the State Theater, I believe, and I can't remember the name of it, but um, it was a they they uh, developed films and stuff like that, and the guy was at his place somehow he got snowed in or something, and he took pictures up and down north uh, north and south on limestone just in his block of, of the drifts downtown in 1950. And I bought some of those. Mm -hmm. He sold them afterwards because a lot of us didn't have cameras or didn't have film in a camera if we had one. I had a little brownie, but I don't think I had any film at the time, you know. So we just have our minds to remind us of it. Mm -hmm. And maybe someday that was, if, if, if I could interject, that was Click Camera. It was Eddie Claben. I was working there. Um, he actually went around and picked all of us up so we could do the end of the year inventory. So we, he didn't lose any time with the shop being closed. That's and he was the one next to State Theater? I, I'm not, I don't mean the State. It was the Majestic Theater. The Majestic Theater on Limestone. Not State. No, he was on the corner of um, Limestone and High. In the old RQ building. Okay. Well, th this, the where I had the, I keep thinking Muir's Drugs or something like that. It, it was uh, just north of the Majestic Theater, across from Boston Store. If you can remember what would have been there. Well, I'll say we have, maybe we can pull out the directories then. Maybe <laughs> I, can, I can let, yeah, I can look that up and let you know which one you were thinking of. I'm well, sorry. I, I was thinking the pictures. I say it's probably it's stamped on them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was thinking of the 1978 blizzard, not yeah. the 1950. Uh, it right. was the 1978 that Eddie Claven opened clicks so that right. we could do the inventory. Yeah. Well, there's, um, I had someone today ask me about a book that came out, um, a little booklet that must have come out a number of years ago. They said all they could remember was by from somebody, that it was from somebody in Hunter, Ohio. I couldn't find anything about it, but if any of you guys know anything about it, um, I, in looking for that, I found a book by um, a Butch Richards from Coggle Falls, where my grandma's from. Hi, Grandma. And uh, she, uh, uh, he, he had written a book, um, and he, he, about his experience with the storm. He was a, um, a trucker, um, so he talked about his experience of, of the truckers, how they got through it. So that's, that's an interesting read, if you guys want to look for that. It's just called um, 19, uh, about the 1978 storm. Um, so there's, there's, there's some, um, re some published things out there, but, um, uh, so some, some neat things. 
And um, Casey, I've got, um, she, we've got a couple more links. Um, we Hold on a second. Uh, You've got a, there's a, there's a raised hand oh, um, yeah. amongst Jean? participants. Are you there, Jean? Did you mean to raise your hand? Did you have something? Mute. Okay. Now can you hear me? Yes. We yes. Can. Okay. Yeah. I, because there's too much to try and put in a comment. Um, that day, my husband, he was my fiance at that time. He worked at McDonald's uh, in um, It was, it started to rain at the time. Nancy went down the beach for being nice and snow. He took because he was locked in it uh, during the maintenance. He told the, uh, the manager, Get these guys out of here. I will close the. Um... Oh, I, uh, I think we her sound was going out because I think her connection was getting lost. Uh, I think we lost her. Sorry, Jean. Uh, but maybe maybe she'll be able to come back and, and, and put her story in. Um, but Casey's sharing a couple of links in the chat of um, other of um, some ways that you can support us. We promised our boss we would share this as well, but we do appreciate anything that um, that you might be able to give to, to support the Heritage Center. We've got links to our our, our PayPal um, donations and and our our Facebook um, direct and, and that's very much appreciated. Um, and also when you do come back in, we've set it up so that you can scan and donate um, virtually when you come in too. Um, we're trying to, um, to, to have um, different ways for, for, for people to, to be able to give. So we, we do very much appreciate that. And we have fun doing these programs with you guys. Um, we're gonna be doing another one at the end of the month with um, uh, Kim Rinker. Uh, she had worked on a new book called Springfield, an Intimate Portrait. You might have seen it online or, or posters for it around town. Um, she did a lot of research on um, lots of different um, stories about the history of, of um, Clark County and Springfield. And she um, shares them um, in the book. And, she's, and I asked her to come um, share some of her favorite stories that she researched um, and information about those. So we'll do that at the end of the month. And then um, we'll have some um, in February as well. So we've been working on um, on upcoming programs. So we we like doing these with you guys. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll keep we'll keep doing um, the virtual programs um, for as long as we can because we get to see all your smiling faces on here <laughs> and talk to people and share some fun things from our archives and our collections. And we really like to be able to do that with everyone uh, and hear your your stories and memories. So I want to thank you guys for coming tonight. Natalie. 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 And I hope you guys all stay safe and healthy and I hope our weather stays good. I hope Dick's right that we're going to have a mild winter. <laughs> um, at least if you're in our area, you will. I'm, uh, we'll see I'm not sure 21st. where everybody is. But <laughs> except for on Bob's birthday on the 21st, it'll probably be freezing. <laughs> so hopefully right. you have a warm birthday, Bob. So <laughs> thank, thank you all for thank being you. here. Thank we appreciate you. Uh, have a good night. Thank you. Great, great virtual. Thank you. And on the uh, 22nd. All right. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.